<laughs> we'll wait till we get a couple people. Do the old tagline. So give us just a second here. We'll uh, wait till we got a person or two on. Good old, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Whatever time you're watching this, as always, thanks for watching Common Sense Fishing. Just in case you haven't seen one in a while, bam! <laughs> Had to throw that out there. Thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. Smash that like button when you get a chance. We're going to have a good show for you tonight. We're going to kind of do an extension of last night's show. We're going to talk about fall transition, tips and tricks, uh, what's really going on right now that I'm seeing. Um, there is a warm-up coming again, so I expect the fishing to probably uh, adapt and change a little bit. However, once this kind of weather starts, it doesn't stop until it gets really cold. So we're going to be seeing some temp swings, a lot of wind. So we're going to cover what to do in those conditions. Also, we're going to hang out tonight, crack some jokes, chill, have a good time. Got a couple beers here. <clears throat> Tonight's dinner is brought to you by the taco truck. <laughs> Got a carne asada and an al pastor taco there for me to uh, munch up here real quick. So uh, that way I don't have to uh, keep everybody held up you know, waiting on eating. <laughs> you guys know how it goes. Got some dust bowl hops of wrath tonight. Mm. Just filled up the AC with some more Freon. I got a leak that I need to fix. That's what I do for a living. Um, so I just, it's been easier for me to spend. I think I did it in about two and a half minutes was my total charge time. It took me about three minutes maybe. So I was done before three minutes. I want to say it was like two and three quarters, something like that. It was really fast. So <laughs> it's easier to do that than to undo everything and redo my line set and all that crap. So I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> Funny news is I'm not even the one that installed it. This is things about 10 years old now. So I had a buddy who helped me do it. Um, I was probably four or five years in the trade at that time. So I needed, I had a friend who helped me, you know, it, been doing it longer so but hey by now i should fix it right you know the saying mechanics have some of the worst cars <laughs> you don't go to work all day and then want to come home and do it do you know just like you don't want to come hang out chill on youtube listen to good old common sense fishing and hear some drama now you guys want to have a good time we're going to talk about fishing a lot of the fun stuff that i see happening hopefully on the channel in the next six months you know to get some growth going on um, get to some new places, fish some new holes, show that I know more than just the Delta and the mother load. So I want to get out to like Berryessa, Clear Lake, stuff like that. But a lot of the lakes are getting dangerously low. The um, A lot of the lakes are going to close or already are closed, like Oroville. So Eastman is just like, I haven't even heard anything about that lake. I have no idea. It might be kicking out monsters and nobody's saying nothing, but I'm assuming it's like a pond right now. Um, I don't even know if you can launch at Eastman. But, uh, hey, um, you know, if, if the fishing uh, is good, I'll take my, my raft out if I have to, even if it's not, right? Go out there just to have fun. Get out on the lake, river, whatever body of water. So all the rivers, lakes, everything's getting dry over here on the West Coast. So there's very few places that have a lot of water. Since it's been so late, and uh, old Mr. Cook's been enjoying that lake for a while now, like I said, if you get a chance, Lake Tulick is one of the only lakes in the area that is full right now. So big shout out to him. He's been putting a lot of people on some good fish. Uh, don't flood the lake, man. Don't beat it up. But uh, that lake is, is doing really good right now because it's fed by New Maloney's. So it's been staying pretty consistently full, having moving water and colder water, much more conductive to a healthy uh, bass fishing environment, you know, for this time of year. At least it's not like super cold or nothing, but it's a lot better than these lakes that have got algae blooms exploding, oxygen contents just not there. And uh, I would assume a lot of the bait fish probably die off in this kind of heat or they have to go down to like 90 feet, 80 feet deep sometimes. You got a thermocline so they can only go so deep so it's a lot of crazy stuff um 
you know, when the when the droughts come like this. So uh, if I was fishing McClure, I would fish the old dam. I would be fishing the pillars, the old train bridge on the right-hand side, halfway between Barrett's Cove North and Barrett's Cove South. If you're facing the dam on the right-hand side, on that shoreline is one portion of the old train bridge is collapsed on, on the shoreline way down there. So right now it should be coming out of the water. Um, <clears throat> Horseshoe Bend, I don't know if that's even reachable right now. So like Arnold Bay is one of my favorite little spots that bass can pen bait fish in there and you can fish underneath the houseboats. You can fish deep out in the middle of it and uh, you can fish the shoreline and the, that rocky point on both sides is really good, especially the big main rounded one that heads in towards Barrett's. Oh, that one's great. Then you can shoot right across the way from Arnold's Bay and fish that main point. Anyways, if you guys from out of state, different area, you know, right now, you want to find uh, the deepest water in your lake, basically, or the deepest areas where bass can change depth really easy without having to travel far. You want to you want to think about what's in the, the lake for the fish to eat, where are they going to be at? Because you might have some, depending on the bodies of water, might be some fish shallow. Because a lot of parts of America aren't, you know, it, we each have our own different, uh, what do you say, uh, we have our own weather patterns, right? So, you know, different areas of the country are definitely going to fish different. I can't even begin to tell you what something like in Texas or Florida or somewhere else might be fishing, while over here, specific to the West Coast, we're exper experiencing severe drought. So, lack of water movement, lower oxygen, higher temperatures, less bait fish because they're more sensitive to this stuff, they'll die off, or they'll just go real deep. They'll just, you know what I mean? They'll be hard for you to catch, because the whole ecosystem is moved to try to survive, basically. So um, right now, fishing can be kind of tough, but like I said, in certain few lakes, man, it's on fire. So fishing is doing pretty good. Uh, if you get a chance to go, you know, fish like Tulip or something like that, but again, don't blow it up. But uh, if I was in the Central Valley area, that would definitely be on one of my uh, top destination stops. Number two, or probably number one, would be the Delta. So even though all the lakes are low, the Delta never really gets super low. I mean, it does get lower-ish, right? There's where it's got a lot of water coming in and the Delta gets real swole and it gets real high. And then there's these drought years where it's rolling out a little bit of a lower level, obviously, right? But the delta maintains a pretty steady level. Um, <clears throat> so right now, one of the places it's definitely not going to close is going to be the delta. It's going to be a place where you can go and get a good chance of getting some big fish, getting lots of numbers, having a good time, and not dealing with the drought conditions. So, But again, uh, West Coast, if you're going through uh, a fishing stint right now i'd strongly recommend spinner baits when you've noticed the wind so spinner baits have been really productive for me lures like spinner baits uh over spins under spins kitex particularly with those uh kitex on spinner baits too um tandems you know double like a colorado like uh, I was using a big single bladed Colorado and slow rolling it and just getting destroyed. Um, had a great time with that. So <clears throat> um, I got another video I got to process too. I forgot that. So there's one coming out Monday that's a really fun video. It shows me and Virgil just hanging out, having a blast. And we catch fish, you know, it's a fun fishing video. But then the next one, me and another guy go out. Me and hell if I know, he'll know. Me and him go out and uh, just, like, we catch some big ones, but not, like, monsters, but some good ones. And we catch multiple of them. And then I dumped something, you know, five to six, seven pounds maybe. I don't know. It's hard to tell, right? You can get it in the boat, but it was huge. Could have even been bigger, maybe an eight. Uh, but I mean, I'm trying to be honest and realistic. It could have been as small as like a four and three quarter, five pounder, but it, I didn't get a good angle on it. It jumped a weird way and kind of a bit out, but you could tell she was a beast and she hit me hard. Boom! I set the hook and she just goes, Whoa! 
and starts taking drag on me. I'm like, whoa, sh like I haven't had a bass this big in a minute. So I hit the button. I let her take some line. And my mistake number one was like it was giving her some run and was taking the the tension with my thumb on the wheel and kind of guiding it and strengthening it and using my pole, right, and letting line go out. And when I decided I think she was tiring, I didn't give her enough time. And I clicked the bell and I start reeling. And then she goes on another, like, strong run. And, and my drag is loose. But, again, this is why you got to be real careful. As soon as you get 10-pounders, 8-pounders at the Delta, it can actually be very hard to land them with a crankbait because there's a really fine balance. Now, I'm using, like, a 400 or 300 and something dollar rod that's specifically made for crankbaits, the specific size I'm throwing, right? I got the right line. I got the right everything. Now, I'm, I'm uh, getting drag pulled. The line is... Uh, you know, the fish is going, the pole's given perfect, and I could feel like it slipped, like it popped off. But then I'm like, oh, I lost it, and it got easier to reel in. And then all of a sudden, it came kind of back, and I'm like, oh, sh I didn't lose it. And I noticed she was coming up. I knew she was going to jump. I tried to put the rod tip down and, and keep reeling, and she came up poof, and just threw that crankbait actually right no right almost hit me dude she threw the crankbait vicious like and that thing came at me and i caught like a a weird backwards almost like you know 45 weird angle and this thing was was beast and uh we've been catching threes and almost like four pounders all day that day and uh so this one was definitely almost double one of those and um i don't know how much of it i got on video because i managed to hit record so I know I have some of the fight on video, I believe, pretty sure. And uh, I just don't know if I was facing the right way when she jumped. Because sometimes I'll do some, like, you know, dip the pole down and then the fish is over here and I'm facing over there. Because I'm more concerned with catching the fish than I am making it look good, which is why I need to get a uh, thing. So hold on real quick, guys. Hello? Hey, how's it going? <clears throat> oh, 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 probably not good news, folks. Hold on. What's up, pops? Why don't you just stay with your sister and if you need it, I'll do whatever I got to do to come get you. Well, if she's still around, why don't you just hang around if you want? We'll talk to me about that later. I'm on live stream right now with that. I love you. Okay, bye. <clears throat> Well, man, holy goodness. All right, okay. Sorry about that, all that, folks. Uh-oh. So my wife, oh, hopefully I didn't break the phone. My wife managed to score a bunch of more toys. She got a, a few more sets of dolls and uh, some stuff. And we got six of these, like, uh, they're only like 30-something bucks, but they're like uh, balance bikes for young kids. So we got like a bunch of those. So we got all this stuff. We're all excited, you know, for the toy drive this year. We're going to take care of uh, the needy kids and do as good as we can. So how's it going, folks? Yeah, just got a, a phone call. Sorry about that. My dad's a little bit upset right now. He's uh, up in Nevada with my aunt as she's uh, passing away potentially right now uh, or soon in the next maybe couple days at most. We're not sure, so we're praying for a miracle, see what happens. But, uh, you know, um, 
so he's dealing with all that. You know, I'm there for him. I'm his support too. But uh, he's just basically calling every once in a while to check in, and and he's stressing out. But I'm I'm there for him. So as soon as this is done, I'll probably call him back, check in, make sure he's all right. But uh, yeah, that's life, man. It's how it rolls sometimes. But anyway, it's not trying to uh, do a buzzkill. Let's keep it on fishing for now. So I, you know, gotta deal. With, we gotta deal with. But uh, oh, and I got my two tacos. I gotta eat those. I got the munchies. I was hungry. I haven't ate dinner yet. Like I said, I don't know if I showed you guys earlier, but we got a carne asada and an al pastor taco. So I'm gonna smash those here in a second. But anyways, <laughs> where are we at here? Oh, look at this, just to COVID notification. There's always kids with COVID at school right now. That's right, something fell. How are you doing? <clears throat> so anyways, um, you know, we got to take care of, uh, take care of each other. So take care of our loved ones, take care of our family. That's also I like take care of people, helping out. Going to have a nice uh, giveaway this Christmas. So for all of you guys that are members, thank you for being members. I think I've already told you I'm going to keep telling you again. Uh, that way don't forget is whether you tune in or not, I need everybody to get a hold of me. So if you don't watch this and it's a month later, now I don't know how long I'm going to be able to hold everything. But uh, uh, come this Christmas, we're going to do a – a giveaway for the entire membership community. See, every single person who's a member will get something special for me. Big thank you. So I want to say, you know, a big thank you to everybody who's been supporting the channel. And, uh, yeah, super excited, like I said, to kind of report an update on the toy drive. So it's kind of slowed down. I don't think it's going to be as big as it was last year. Last year we took care of 200 kids. I figure this year we'll probably do about half that. So still you know it's an incredible thing to to help as many as you can even if you you know if we all did a little bit so the more positive stories not doing this for self-recognition if you know me or know the channel i've actually been doing this uh since before i ever had a youtube channel um you know and the story is basically you know i've lost my son 2006 and uh Ever since then, I've pretty much tried to help out, and I've done it as often as I could. Uh, some years I can afford to do it, and some years I can. So uh, I'm stoked to help out. So, And each and every one of you guys who've helped donate, gone on fishing trips with me, thank you guys so much. But, yeah, just letting everybody know, we'll put this out in Facebook land, too, that uh, the toy drive's kind of officially full on. It started, so... I have lots of openings, you know, I'll be doing work, HVAC work, but it's kind of at my leisure right now, slowing down. So I'm just going to kind of take what work I can get here and there and book some fishing trips. So that way we can help some little kids. Uh, I've got a couple of the shopping sprees recorded. I've got to go on another one. I've got some money saved up for them from the fund and uh, we'll go do that. So um, I've been recording a lot of them. So I'll go through the store and we're just like grabbing toys. So at the end, you guys will get to see that. You know, we'll put that all together. But uh, that's what we do on the channel here. Try to help the community, help each other, stay positive, have a good time, uh, support each other, all the best tips and tricks. And right now, I would say if you're struggling, try to slow down a little bit. So go a little deeper, go a little slower. So you get excited. Summer's been intense. Top water's been great. Fishing is kind of slowing down. So just slow your presentations down. Don't be af afraid to throw things like a deep driving crankbait, a big spinner bait, um, an underspin or a swim bait, something like a swim jig, you know, and uh, cover some water. Uh, get active as far as cover water and maybe fish slower or fish deeper, but that also means throw up in a foot of water and bring your lure down. But be exclusive to make sure that you don't rule out fishing down to 30, 40 feet or 25 feet, I'd say. Uh, I'd probably say the max is 30. So a good 20-foot diving crankbait or a slow roll spinner bait will pull those big fish up from that depth or the, even the two and three pounders if they're hanging there and you're reeling it slow enough. And then when they follow it, if every once in a while you're doing some change in speed, some erratic movement, um, it can really help trigger a bite. So 
lot of uh, a lot of my fish right now are coming suspended with a slow roll. So they're not quite on the bottom and they're not quite moving fast at all. And they're not on the top. So they've gone down a little bit. Uh, we got a lot of bad air quality. So if you're in the West Coast, I'd honestly say I'd chill right now and only fish when you have to. Um, or make sure you take a mask or something because it's there's now there's multiple fires so here in california as usual the whole state's lit on fire and we're burning like the devil's butthole and uh you know you got the dixie fire you got all these other fires in northern california and now sure as shit we got another one over here by mariposa jamestown so uh hopefully <coughs> that one doesn't turn into a huge nightmare as of late, you know, I haven't checked to what, where that one stood at. It was a relatively small fire, but in a bad area where they can explode relatively quickly. Thank goodness it's not windy today. So um, <clears throat> at least for the fire and the firemen, for us, that means the smoke settles in the Central Valley and in these areas, and it just gets nasty. So um, it's been pretty, pretty, like, sick out there i don't know if i would go fishing much i do go but i'm going right now i'm only going like once a week maybe like every great rare once in a while i go twice a week but especially this last few weeks with the smoke it's just been i'll go do one trip and then that's it so because it's just like smoking a bunch of packs you can feel it in your lungs your throat it's just nasty it smells it's stinky if you're not in California or if you're not in the smoke torn area, dude, like, but everybody has their woes, right? East Coast is about to get smashed by a hurricane right now. So prayers and thoughts out to them. You know what I mean? I could picture memes and like stuff I would come up with. I'd be like in my backyard with like one of those inflatable water barrier things or that you fill up with water or air or something and it acts like a big dam around your home. And uh, it goes up to so many feet high. And uh, so unless the water goes over that thing's level, then if it does, you're screwed. But, uh, you know, I could picture me fishing out of, like, my front door or my window trying to catch a fish. Or, like, you know, have you seen videos when fish are, like, swimming around in flooded houses and there's, like, a fish swimming around? It's like, that'd be crazy. The stuff people see in different parts of the world, right? You got the tornado uh, alley. And then obviously you've also got der derelict like desert parts that actually do have water going through them, like Arizona, Nevada. Right now they're super dry, like Lake Mead, all that stuff. But uh, usually they have a place to go kick it up too, right? And drive their boats and fish. But that's out in the blazing sun, not a lot of shade. Dang, I got bit right there on my ankle. Sorry, guys. I'm like, I got to scratch it. It is just a little bastard. So probably, uh, uh, what do you call it? A uh, mosquito got me. I left my door open. Shame on me. So anyways, <laughs> all right. Uh, like I said, I think biggest tips fishing-wise that I could give you guys tonight is slow down if you're struggling. Um, and if you're already going slow, then maybe speed up a little bit, but move, cover water, find where the fish are at, because right now the fish will, will migrate and move to very key important areas because of how brutal the lake can be. There'll be entire areas that just don't have many fish in them because there's not any bait fish or crawdads or anything. Water's just too hot or the oxygen content's just not right bait fish or other fish have pulled out, moved to other areas. So you have areas that are like barren right now, brutal, tough, might have a fish here, a fish there. So move around until you find good fish. Then when you do stay on that school, stay on those areas like that, beat them up, figure them out, and then fish other areas like them. So if you determine and figure out a pattern and stick with it and cover lakes looking for the best patterns like that. So if you find that they're on a particular type of shoreline, rock wall, structure, offshore, whatever, and coves or in something, off secondary points, then go hit all of those up. But fish them thoroughly, right? Because you could have a large school of a couple hundred fish moving around and you could be catching a few. There could be monsters in there. Cycle through your baits or just, you know, have fun. Put a bunch of fish in the boat <clears throat> but uh 
you know, and, and schools will turn on and off. So when that one turns off, you might be able to go run to another one. So if you've located a couple of schools of fish, you can just bounce around between them sometimes or just sit at one and wait. They'll turn on and off. And you'll notice too on your fish finder, they'll come and they'll go like little rat packs. Sometimes you'll think it's like, it's not like, it's usually, in my opinion, it's not like you have a school of thousands or hundreds of fish that go, you know, and they swim underneath you. And then two minutes later, another school of thousand fish swims underneath you. And then 10 minutes later, a huge armada of fish swim underneath you. I think what it is, is it's the fish moving one way and then back another, and they're hovering and moving around that particular spot or area. And then your graph is picking them up. They're disappearing, reappearing. When they do that, that's usually a very active, like, school moving around, smashing around. So throw those crankbaits and spinnerbaits down in their depth range, yo-yo LVs at them or spoons. You know, get get creative. Even a weightless Cinco if you have to. And if not, then probably ain't bass. But you never know. So, But uh, right now, summertime is uh, late summer, fall transition. The bite can get exceptionally good here. We just got to wait for the water to cool off just enough. And the bass, once they kind of get fully on, like, hey, this is all right, this is it. That's when they're going to start feeding up, really corralling and chasing what bay fish there is. Water temperatures will start cooling. Bait fish can start coming up towards the surface more if they're deep and they're down in these crazy holes. So it just depends on the lake and what you're fishing. But a lot of stuff can come, comes out this time of year, just like spring, right? Spring is when everything is frozen and uh, everything is, is, is all like dead in winter, right? It's dormant. It's hiding. And then spring is when everything comes to life, right? summertime can be also a time where everything's kind of hiding it's brutally hot you know bluebird skies fishing can be sometimes tough and the top water can be relatively good sometimes in fish are a lot of times are smashing around but sometimes they're doing it really deep um or and and we've all had tough days like that. again i like to mention it because it was a brutal tournament we had nick the informative fisherman i think matt frazier was there uh, I know Ryan Cook was there. I was there. There's was a bunch of dudes. And I know one of the guys that did best caught a lot of fish LVing, uh, like an LV 500 and spooning in like 30 to 50 or 60 feet of water over like 100 to two, 300 feet of water, just in giant open water on a school of fish down there. And they weren't near the top at all. And this was brutal, 100 degree, clear sky, miserable day type weather. Um, and then sometimes, like I said, they can be active. So this can be a, a tough time of year, just like the winter can be sometimes, right? And then fall is that period where life knows like everything's coming to an end soon, right? As far as the cycle, it's it's starting over again. Everything's going to slow down. Winter's going to come, right? So they feed up. They become more active again. Everything's out. Like the crawdads are doing their thing. A lot of the bait fish is moving and changing positions. The lake might start turning over right as the nights get colder. And that's ain't happening yet, not even close. But when the nights get colder, this is the start of that transition from summer to fall. And fish sense it really quickly. So you want to be the first one that is on those patterns because you'll catch a lot of the fish before guys can relate to what's actually going on as the fishing changes, you know what I mean? And uh, like I said, in my opinion right now, slow rolling bigger stuff is about to be a, a big way to catch bigger fish. Numbers is just going to be probably fishing deeper and slower. And, and when I mean that, you can still catch them shallow. Uh, they'll always be moving up and down, up and down. But, um, you know, with this cool down that we had, now we're seeing another warm up. So... We'll see how that affects their behavior. Fishing's never, they're never just shut off completely. They'll come, you know, in waves. But again, when the nights get cold, that's when life starts changing. That's when uh, everything starts. That's harvest moon, right? That's when the plants start to become ripe and finished and people harvest, right? So, and and, and like Thanksgiving, that's when they celebrate the, the harvest, the bounty. Everything is being harvested. Same thing in the fishing world, right? Um, and that transition begins when the nights get cold. So how's everyone going? Hell if I know. Hope you had a good trip out at the Delta. We smash them. We had a good time. We didn't catch a ton of numbers, 
but man, we got like two pounder here, three pounder there, one and a half pounder there, two pounder there, three pounder here. Like what's going on? Heck yeah, and a bunch of little dinks, you know, 10, 12 inches, stuff like that. And then I'm I lost a monster, you know. And uh, we caught a nice little buzz too, as well as a bunch of fish. <clears throat> How's it going, Dustin? Just chilling. So we had a we had a fun time, dude. So I can't wait. You guys will get to see if you guys are members. I hope you guys got a chance to watch Fat Cats on the Delta. If not, for all the subscribers, that one will be out. Uh, that one will be out tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, no, not tomorrow. That one will be out Monday. And it shows us smash like a two hundred dollar meal, <laughs> like where we had like bacon wrap duck. We had uh, shrimp. We had fried raviolis. We had a whole pizza. <clears throat> and then we had a like, bunch of shots, a bunch of beers. And we just jacked it up hardcore. <laughs> and a bowl of clams <laughs> and bread. Oh, man, like two baskets of bread. Oh, me and Virgil became Vince and Steve. So a little inside joke is uh, I got this buddy named Virgil, right? We go fishing all the time. And one, and he told me these stories about all his brothers, right? And one of his brothers had Vince, Vern, Virgil, right? Um, and so he's telling me, hey, okay, about this, about his brother Vince. So then the next time we're out fishing and we get all bent and I just called him Vince for some, like, I just on accident, right? Oh, Vince. And he laughed. He thought it was hilarious. And then I, I called him Vince like twice before I caught it. And we were already bent and he was just cool playing along with it. And I'm like, ah, Virgil. So, like, ever since then, like, what we'll do, just inside stupid joke you might see in the videos, I'll call him Vince every once in a while. Or when, like, he's, you know, did something either super stupid or super awesome and caught something. It's like, Vince. And he's, and you'll hear him laugh out hard. And we have a great time, man. Me and Vince have a great time when we fish. Or Virgil, right? So, um, hell if I know. So, me and him went out. We had a blast, too. We were having a hell of a fun time so we went out there and smashed all over the delta and uh fished all over went to garlic brothers that's our little routine we do so when we got out to the delta we drop in at lads or used to drop in too sometimes at lois park but it's closed mount diablo lois park you can't use that uh ramp anymore it's closed down so it's either downtown stockton or lads right so you know launch from lads and uh, we'll, what we do is we usually go fish downtown Stockton area by the big boats, some of the shoreline, some of the cuts and stuff like that, some of the little coves, <clears throat> things like that, points, main points and things that are sticking out, smashing up, you know, fish the little area, checking on all the good little gravy spots, so to speak. And then we take off and we usually hit like windmill cove stuff like that over towards party island right and we cut in and we go off towards white slough or whatever it is i think and we head to garlic brothers which is a uh, benjamin ben holt benjamin holt right so we do all that then we go just have a great time <laughs> that's the only way to explain it so uh what's my favorite striper rig or lure all right, uh, favorite striper rig or lure is going to be a pencil popper probably and like uh, like the bigger one, and it's going to be white and red. And uh, I've caught some Mondos like that. See, back in the days, we used to go to Checkpoint 12 or 13, whatever the hell it is out there in Los Banos. You go to Checkpoint, drive all the way back to where it's at, right? There's the big gate. Um, and you walk along the little canal road, and there's the the big uh, things that open and close, right? That's where the um, spillway's at, right, or whatever it's called. And we jump the fence, right, and we walk across it to the other side. Then what you do is we walk around that point, and there's this big, giant flat that goes out like a big main lake point. is deep on one side, deep on another. And the striper always run in circles right there. So we always know you go you go in the morning, you go in the afternoon. So we used to go out there, beers and stuff and some junk food, whatever, and uh, we'd fish early morning, smash them until whenever the bite died, and then go back and chill on shore, get wasted. We'd bass fish and stuff. Caught a couple three and four pounders out of San Luis, or the O'Neill Four Bay, 
and uh, then we go back to striper fishing as the sun's setting. And I've watched my buddies catch 30, uh, 35 pounders, like 20, 25 pounders. My biggest one was like 20 something pounds. I had one that had to be close to some kind of record, 50, 40 to 60 pounds. Biggest striper I've ever seen. It was a monster. It was huge. I got it all the way into me and freaked out. Like I couldn't like, like it was just thrashing, going nuts. And the big old lure, I was using a big old lure. It's all flinging at me. I'm like, oh shit. And I'm all messing with it. It's just this huge, I don't know, probably, probably like this or something bigger than that. And it was huge. It was this big, like that, right? Big old striper. And, and I'm just like, and it turns around and it makes a run, right? And we're real, it's real close to me. And it makes a run and uh, just doop, pulls because the line was all loose and slack kind of in a way. Like it was bouncing around. It wasn't really like slack, but it wasn't super tight. And he's like near me, does a 360 or, or not do 180, faces the other direction and just shoots off right away from me and just what? And then my line starts spooling and then pop. I get my lure in, and the hooks are all straightened out. And he was spooling me and took, like, half my spool before he popped. It was so crazy. I fought that fish for, like, 40 minutes or something. Like yes, checkpoint 12. But where you, you go, we go across checkpoint 12, right? We'd walk across those gates and stuff. We go to the other side. We'd walk around on that, around that point, that main point. There's this big cove, right? You walk around the cove to the next point and the big cove and it all goes out like this to a big old long point and it gets deep where the channel swings on the right you want to be right there by where the channel swing comes up to the shallow and we walk to the water was like up to here and we cast as far out as we could and we're big old pencil poppers with big old like eight foot big giant spinning rods you know, like bait fishing rods. We, we, we didn't even have the right gear. <laughs> but we had heavy line on, big old heavy reels, big old heavy poles, and we just throw bait. We just throw, a, throw those pencil poppers, a big old giant one, super far out. Wow. And we'd have fun. So I don't know if you guys would be interested in seeing me do stuff like that. But, you know, maybe, maybe I would. So it just depends. Somebody put me on that hot bike. They were like, yo, they're out here. They're killing it on this. And we went out there, and a whole group of us got to go on a spree. And you know the funny thing was? It was so depressing for me because I lost every single fish except for one that was like 18 to 20-something pounds. I don't remember. Um, we had a scale. You know, we weighed it, but it was like one of them wasn't digital and it move around or, you know, wasn't quite sure what it was. It was like 18 to 20, maybe 22 pounds max. And uh, like I said, dudes, my buddies were getting like 30 pound plus stripers just left and right. And uh, not too much. They were losing a bunch. We were losing lures, snapping lines, hooks straight and left and right. But we had mad tackle. We were prepared for it. And uh, I, I had lost. I had my line snapped so many times. Um, because at first I got spooled, I got spooled by a monster. Like it was a miserable day for me. I had nothing but giants on and couldn't catch any one of them. And I managed to catch one and imagine catching a 20 pound striper and being pissed off. I'm dead serious. You can like ask my buddies, dude, I was pissed off 20 pound striper. And I was mad as hell. Like, ah, ah, what the heck? You know, because, like, I'm jealous. I mean, I'm happy, but I'm jealous. Like, I'm losing every fish left, and they're breaking my line. They're straightening my hooks. And my buddies are, like, they're having a hard time with me, but they're catching a couple more. And they're, all of them are, like, 10 pounds bigger than mine. Like, boom, big fish. Boom, big fish. Boom, big fish. I'm just like, ah. And uh, I think it was the lure they were using. I asked, you know, hey, can I get one? And I, they started, we started going through them. And I don't, I don't know, maybe I think it was just the pencil poppers. Maybe it wasn't the size because I had some walking baits and some other baits that we lost. We lost so many baits. 
or what we did is we had the hooks straightened and we didn't have the gear to like change out hooks so we basically we lost our hooks so they got straightened you had to throw the lure away or to the side and go through a new one we had like a whole bag of these lures right because we were prepared we knew that they were there that we were catching them like that we had pictures sent to us everything and this was like back in the days when cell phones didn't even have cameras like dude took like a digital picture you know what i mean on his like camera of him of the fish and then the net and he brings it and he shows us and he goes i've been on him like that for days and we're like what we all go out there it's just the trip of my life and uh like i said i was jealous as hell but hurt as hell that i had a 20 or 18 to 20 pound striper and everybody around me was landing three you know three foot stripers almost you know two and a half foot stripers they were there were, everybody was catching 30 pound plus fish and i'm just like like oh, oh i was just too excited like oh, oh, you know what i mean like ah, my head exploding and uh i got i got i guess i got pumped i got spooled once i got snapped off so many times so anyways i i had something that was massive like i've been seeing these fish get caught all day and it was bigger than the biggest fish landed which i think came in at almost 40. it was like 38 something like that they were just crushing them big old monster fish and this thing was bigger and at one like when it did that 180 it made this huge swirl of water it was so crazy and i was like genuinely scared of getting hooked or just messed up by this fish it was all chicken shitted out so anyways the fish went on the run and it was just you know took drag for a while probably took like i said about half my line or a third of my line and then just it popped it didn't snap the line the hooks came back done just done so i was like damn so anyways yeah i've had some fun time striper fishing i've had a great couple of times cat fishing so i go after catfish uh, carp fishing oh dude so man yeah love to go too man we just gotta find out when they're biting like that again so i had a little warrior who goes like fishing all the time put me on game he's like they're here i'm like ha ha let's go i was like hell yeah but uh see imagine if that would have happened back in the days of youtube right and i would have gone out there and recorded that day for you guys to see that spot would have been bombarded the next day. <laughs> I swear to God, there would have been a thousand. It would have looked like Nimbus Dam. There would have been a thousand angry anglers up to their stomachs out fishing. <laughs> there really was a school of monster striper just circling. And I swear, I ain't lying. Like, I got pumped. I'm telling you, my buddies caught fish all day because we were there from, like, we were there from morning till from sun up till sundown and it was just a fish fest and i'm telling you i caught one fish all day i was genuinely pissed off so anyways um carp fishing i've caught carp probably 30 plus pounds out of bear creek as long as my leg i'm talking monster carp like three feet long carp you know like what the hell monsters just absolute beasts like, I've got pictures of me holding them where the carp's, like, up to my belly button and the tail's touching the ground. It's, like, or right at my belly button and the tail is touching the ground. I'm, like, what the hell? So, uh, I fish for anything that bites the pole, you know. And uh, I think I told everybody the story, um, what kind of bait for uh, what, what. So, like, uh, the carp, I use cheese it crackers at uh bear creek if i'm fishing bear creek i use cheese it crackers and a very light weight depending on the uh, flow of the current and uh at, at lake yosemite i learned to use this pack bait with fake corn and some attractant and this thing worked killer caught a ton of carp they were all between three and four and like 10 pounds uh, but there's a couple of monsters in those schools. I've seen 20 pound carp caught out of uh, Lake Yosemite before, but now the catfish I've caught, you know, monster catfish. We've got 20 pound catfish out of uh, San, you know, right by checkpoint 12. Uh, we've got 12, 13 pounders out of Clear Lake. 
And uh, I lost one at Clear Lake that was probably 20 plus, 30 pound, easy monster catfish. It was just crazy. It was scary how big this catfish was. I don't know. I can't properly calculate. It may have been smaller, but it was huge. Just the hugest catfish I've ever had on. And then another story here is that uh, Kelsey Bass Ranch, where I used to have a membership and fish all the time. Right after bass spawn, I was just cruising around one early summer day looking for fish and beds and other stuff and uh, just fishing and having fun. But it was real quiet. I uh, had the motor on low, and I was just cruising, and the water was very clear. And there was this spot where I just pulled up, and there was about a five- or six-foot-long catfish. I kid you not, like a five- or six-foot-long catfish. I'm just like, what the? And so I really want to catch that, you know. I've caught some 12, and I think the biggest was maybe close to 14 pounds out of uh, some ponds. I've got a picture of me with, like, an albino catfish with red eyes and white skin. It was really cool. Uh, super monster. I obviously threw that fish back. So, um, you know, I've caught a lot of different fish. Uh, obviously, you know, just the, you know, the regular old ones too, like trout, crappie, bluegill. But, uh, you know, the green, the little green guys hold a special spot in my heart, right? <clears throat> so, um, you know, that's what I like to fish for most, but I'll fish for anything. Like, uh, ask hell if I know. We were out at the Delta, and I seen some fish jumping out in the middle of the main. And I'm like, ooh, striper. And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, striper. And I go over there, and I start casting at him. <clears throat> and sure enough, I get like a three-pound striper. <clears throat> and I'm like... I was like, that's cool. Maybe two and a half, something like that. But mm -hmm. sorry folks, I'm eating real quick. Let me get that bite now. <clears throat> so oh, sorry. We've got <coughs> Two more fishing videos coming out. So we've got another trip at the Delta coming out Monday. And uh, there's the one I put out just tonight. And then we also have me and Hell If I Know's trip. That will probably be coming out like Wednesday or Thursday for the members. Maybe Wednesday, put it out live for the public Thursday or Friday. So I'll give you guys, you know, 24, 48 hours. Um, and then we'll release it, or I might even do it next Monday. We'll see. But I want to give everybody time to hopefully watch it. And also, I want to keep reiterating so that if you guys um, are on at different times, I want all the members to know I got a special uh, Christmas present planned for every member. So I want to say a big thank you for that. Um, so just make sure you guys are, you know, have your notification bells checked, all that. And uh, we'll reach out and get a hold of you before uh, Christmas. And a uh, big thank you to everybody for December's giveaway. Now, next month's giveaway, stay tuned. Keep your notification bell checked. Uh, Charles Chalk won this one, so we're going to get him a gift card. A uh, big thank you to him. So, yeah, we've been having fun. I've been actually getting out and been getting to do some fishing at the Delta now. I got the little hole issue fixed, so now I'm smashing around and driving more. So I'm covering water. Feeling a little chippier, so I'm catching more fish. Feeling back in the game, it feels good. But ultimately, I still need to get that uh, that uh, that drain pipe fixed or that valve fitting fixed, and I need to get uh, you know uh, uh, the pump issue or electronics issue fixed. And away we go. I'd also like to upgrade the fish finder, so we'll see what happens. Um, you know, I might. I can't afford it, but hopefully if things go well soon, um, I can take it somewhere and have all that work done. But there's a lot of stuff we got to do. But in the meantime, boat floats great. She smashes. Um, 
I just don't have a live well, so I can't compete in tournaments, and we can't box fish for pretty pictures. So we can get a one fish picture, rarely a couple, you know, doubles, but we're not holding up no three or four fish, a glory pick, and catching two big monsters is probably not going to happen because you can't, we can't hold the fish for any time at all. You got to get it back in the water. So, you know, until we get the live well uh, fixed, everything will be video only. So, you know, the, I uh, won't have some nice pictures for thumbnails and for like, uh, well, I guess I could get some screenshots, but for like Facebook posts, stuff like that. So we'll work on that. But I've got it. Like I said, I've got another couple cool videos where I've already recorded them. I just got to edit them. We'll get those out soon. And uh, I'll be out fishing again uh, next Friday. And also, I think this weekend, I'm going to probably get out and go somewhere. Maybe take one of my kids somewhere and go to uh, the main lakes out here and uh, hit up one of these mother load lakes. I'm not sure. Or I might stay home and take care of business. I don't know. Either way. But, uh, you know, thanks for watching for the Friday live stream. Appreciate everybody who's uh, watching. Remember to smash that like button. And if you get here late or you uh, are watching this after and it's not live anymore, big thank you for watching. Smash that like. And if you're new here, subscribe. But uh, anyways, let's get back to it. <clears throat> now, like I said, when the nights cool off, those fish start to know the winter's coming. So get ready, get your lures and your setups prepared and change for the lures that are going to be needed, which in my opinion are going to be the jig. <clears throat> You're going to probably want a drop shot or a Ned rig, uh, a deep diving crankbait right now, and a Colorado or Tandem um, double-bladed spinner bait. Uh, depending on the water clarity, maybe you want a willow, uh, but I would go with Colorado. I would go with vibration over uh, stealth and also um, Kitex for trailers is really kicking good right now on spinner baits. I would even assume instead of a swim jig, you can probably take a football head jig and put a Kitex on it and use it almost like a swim jig, but at the same time have the head of a football jig so that you can kind of swim this thing around but bounce it off of rocks and you literally let it hit the dirt and jump it and bounce it and have less likelihood of getting the head snagged. While if you have a swim jig with a triangular shaped head, that may pull into a rock if you want to fish it slow. Right. So it depends on the fish's activity levels. So like I said, it, they should go up and down, up and down, um, back and forth kind of with the weather until we get really settled into a certain pattern. Then they should light up for that fall bite. Uh, right now, I think is kind of the transition with some weird weirdness going on because of the first real changes in temperature at night. Um, so fishing's gotten a little bit tougher, but I adapted in the last trip. We actually did pretty good. So hopefully when we go next week, uh, I'll have learned from that and we'll have a couple of different options to where if they're not biting one way, I have a backup uh, pattern and plan in, in, uh, in my bag, so to speak. So that way I don't get locked in and forget and just keep pounding the shoreline and fishing a certain way. I can remember to hold up, you know, so fish my search bait, top, top water, you know, crank bait, bigger baits, uh, maybe a bottom bouncing crawdad or Cinco or something, uh, Texas rig, or vice versa would then be um, something like a smaller crank bait, maybe a uh, drop shot, and maybe a jerk bait instead of top water. So my lure selection is going to change, and also my speed. So I might uh, use the lures. I might even use the same set of lures, but my, the pattern might simply be slower and lower. Or spinnerbait is really key in the winter. Or not winter, sorry, in the wind, I mean. And so with the fall, you're going to get a lot of wind. And using that to your advantage, I think the spinnerbait is going to be a real big, a big weapon this year so. I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to be throwing it heavy. I recommend you do the same. It's a real simple tool. Catches a lot of fish, and a lot of guys, I think, have been neglecting it because every year there's new lures and new stuff coming out. Spinnerbait's an old, tried, trusted, and true lure. 
Um, so I know there's guys that throw it, but I've personally not been throwing it for a while because I've been focusing too much on, in my opinion, crank baits, swim baits, and jigs and jerk baits and stuff. And that spinner bait is a real deadly lure because you can toss it out and work like a jig, let it flutter to the bottom and pull it up and let it flutter down. And, you know, you can reel it slow roll, you can reel medium, you can reel it fast, almost like a buzz bait, like a wake bait, right, with the blades right under the water, just throwing water. It's basically a wake bait. You can go through all kinds of stuff without getting snagged easy. And when you get bit, it's almost always a hard bite because you're reeling and it's a moving bait. So if it does get hit, even if you're going slow, usually it's a nice feel. And a lot of the times you're going to have a good hook set. You're going to catch those. How's it going, Marco? Nice to see you on tonight. How's it going? Sup, y'all? <clears throat> Been ram ranting and rambling about fishing tonight. So went off about some stories at Checkpoint 12, all kinds of fun stuff. So let everybody know. Make sure you're checking in on the channel for uh, the members giveaway, especially December. Every member is going to win. So technically not even a giveaway. It's just a big thank you to all the members. So I wish you a Merry Christmas in advance. I know it's only like August. Or what's this crackhead doing thinking about uh, Christmas in August, right? Well, I'm doing my toy drive. As you can see, the pile of toys to my right, if I lean over, it's getting a little bigger. If I go this way, you see all there's bikes over there. And then over here around the corner where you can't see, we've got another little pile of toys starting and some balance bikes that are meant for like very young kids to learn to like balance and teeter on and use their feet to walk and and the the wheels are more of support so that by the time they're ready they almost don't even need training wheels so it helps them at a young age build balance and stuff like that they're safe they're not too high up so they're for young kids um got our, like six of those donated so <clears throat> Big shout out to Tara for that. So thank you to her. So I've got a lot of uh, toys that are coming in. We got to go do another shopping spree. So excited, excited, excited. Good to focus on the positive. Sometimes uh, we get too wrapped up in the negative. I think it's good to hear positive stories, cover positive things, talk about positive fish, like catching fish. Sometimes I was wishing I was catching fish, right? <laughs> Just not. Sometimes it's fishing and not catching. Almost always, though, it's catching. But every once in a while, I go on a fishing trip. You know what I mean? Good old Pepe Le Pew. I've been canceled. Oh, goodness. <laughs> but anyways, again... If you guys have any questions, comments, any topics you guys want to go over, feel free to shout it out. I'm happy to go over it with you guys. But in general, like I said, I really want to build upon what I talked about last night. Colors are going to start changing for me. You know, what I like to use is going to start really changing because, like I said, when the nights cool down, that's the big sign all of Mother Nature uses to know that it's time to finish. <coughs> excuse me and the light hours too when the light starts getting um when the hours start getting lower that's when all the plants start finishing like i said harvest moon that's when the crops are all collected and finished that's when those fish also turn up turn on and activate really <clears throat> restringing all your reels while watching huh what do you uh uh i'd i'd recommend I'd recommend one of your bait casters use some mono, 15 pound test or so, uh, for your crank baits and top water in your lures with treble hooks, perhaps. Um, I'd recommend one of your bait casters with 12 or so pound test fluoro for like a shaky head, for like a Texas rig, for uh, certain lures uh, that you want with no real stretch in them. Um, maybe even a jerk bait, certain lures that uh, you want to have certain action with that you want to use fluoro on, um, uh, some even crank baits that you want to get deeper. Like if you really want to get it deeper, you use a little bit of a lighter line and switch from mono to fluoro because mono floats. So fluoro gets you just a small 
bit amount deeper. And uh, if you're using a good reel, drag set right, and or you know how to control spool tension with your thumb, you can click the button, let a big fish take you all around. Um, so, you know, that's a, a little tactic I like to use too as well. A little secret is everyone says to use uh, mono, so you have stretch, forgiveness, this and that. One of my little tricks I'll use when the bite is finesse and or I want to get a lure just a little bit deeper is I'll actually go to fluoro and say I use 15 pound mono. I might go to 12 pound fluoro and just really make sure that if I get bit, I'm careful with how hard I set the hook with uh, once I hook it, if it's anything remotely decent, instantly being prepared to hit the spool button and let it take line and use my thumb to uh, to do the resistance and guide it and move it if I need to. And again, having your drag set so that if you do start reeling down on it and it changes its mind, you're going to have some give and you're going to want to remember to have a set a little lighter than you would because you're not going to have that give that your mono line had. So if you don't want the hooks to rip out of the face, straighten or break off on an 8 to 10, 12 pound bass, which I've had many happen, this is why I fish this way. Now, uh, at the delta, though, it can be real tough because that's a tough balance. 12 pound test is not strong enough to horse these fish in. If you have proper um, hooks and gear, I would recommend 15 to 17 pound, and then you can hook a eight to 10 pound bass and kind of muscle it in and change it when it tries to run on you. Because a lot of times I'll be using a, a square bill right up next to a dock or up to something dumb. And I've been catching two, three pounders all day and then bam, an eight to 10 pounder just nails me. I hook it and we're on for the fight of the life. And uh, they take me and run me. I've had stripers. I don't know how big they were, but they couldn't be under you know, they had to be 15, 20 pound stripers. And I thought they were bass at first. They were just so vicious, so strong. I even had like 15 pound test on and I had a big bait caster. And I had one just like spool me almost. And then when I tried to force it, it just broke. Pow. And it took me forever. And I'm just like, damn, I'm genuinely fighting this thing hard. One of the strongest fights I've ever had, actually. Um, Never got to see the fish. I can't even verify it was a striper. Could have been a sea lion, actually. So, <laughs> but, so I've had some fun times, definitely, though, the last couple years. I'll tell you what, is since I've had a boat, like, my first boat I got was in, like, my first actual bass boat that I got was, like, in 2014, I want to say. Maybe 15, something like that. And I had it for about three or four years, and I sold it in, like, 2017. So it had to have been, like, 2013 or so I probably got it. 2013, I want to say, maybe 14. And I sold it by 2017 or 18. And, uh, yeah, I caught a lot of fish in that boat. A lot. Monsters, too. Uh, I don't think I got any double digits out of that boat. Most of them were on shore. I was in my next two, they came out of this boat. So now I got this boat I've had for almost two years now or something like that. And I've got two double digits and like a couple of six and sevens. But usually it was crazy when I had my other boat and when I shore fished too. It was, I think it was more when I shore fished. And I was closer to shore. Uh, my angles were better. And then I could fish where you couldn't get into with the boat. I walked down by some stairs or some docks and fish in the back little slip area. And I'd catch monsters. Like I say, eight, nines, lots of eights, lots of eights. Um, but a few, you know, got a, got my first 10-pounder doing that at uh, Ben Holt. So, you know, but uh, everybody fishes their own way. I just strongly recommend if you're going to use braid, make sure you use a braid to something leader. Or if you're using all braid, that it's for the right stuff, punching, frogging, certain things. Otherwise, in my opinion, I like to go with the either fluoro or mono, depending on the application. But a lot of times, I use fluoro over everything to have sensitivity, line sync, um, castability, just a couple different things. 
But again, I'm no fool. I know when you know you should use mono on the right application for sure. <clears throat> but the right stuff like copolymers have really, I think where it's like mono coated fluoro and stuff like that, where the line has stretch, but like not as much and it's real sensitive. It like has, I forget, I might be spacing this wrong. Don't beat me up here, guys. But I know Don Mormon was talking about cold polymers and using like 25 pound test for big swim baits and big, you know, 10 plus pound bass. Yeah, and that sounds about right to me. You know, 20, 25 pound test. If you're going to be using these giant lures with these giant hooks and you have the power and capability to haul these bass in, right? But when you're catching at the Delta on a 2.5 inch square bill with 12 pound test, you're not going to take a 10 pound bass full of energy you know, near all these docks and boats and just control them. He's going to go underneath stuff. You got to pray you keep that fish. You got to keep your tip in the water. They're going to run into every weed pile on their way out too. Oh, they can get so damn hard to catch. I've lost so many double digits at the Delta. It's not even funny. That's where I've had the most on. Lots of them, or at least eight pluses. And I've landed a ton of eights, so I know what an eight looks like real good once it hits eight. I have a hard time between five and eight. Like, so like a six and a seven-pound bass. I might think a bass is six and it's really five. I might think it's seven and it's really six. Or I might think, you know, vice versa. But that little range, six and seven pounds, seems to be hard for me to guess. As soon as it hits eight, I know what an eight looks like. I've caught so many of them. Six and sevens are like the oddballs for me. Where I've caught a, a bunch of them, but not like anywhere near. I've caught a ton of eights. You know, and that's been mostly out of the Delta. I've got them out of McClure. I've got them out of Pedro. I've got them out of everywhere else. But, uh, well, not Eastman. But I, not a couple places. But I've got some monsters. But most of them came out of the Delta. And uh, caught a few nines. But, you know, my first double digit, that was – never forget it he came out the delta so and i've been with my buddy jeremy when he's caught multiple double digits pedro mcclure so he's he's did real good got a lot of big fish we all fish differently too like he'll he'll fish his way i fish mine and we both have fun so you know there's always a a way to catch fish i never swear that one way is more right than the other unless you're winning a check in a tournament then there's always obviously a couple of guys who are more right than others. And I think a lot of it more over lures and gear and boat is a spot selection. So boat may be important. Um, and yeah, fishing the finders and the technology is even getting way more important. But what's also super important is uh, just finding the spots where these big fish are at. Finding the areas and, and finding the schools and, and and not just blindly trying to find them or catch them, um, which is what I've been forced to do now for like the last two years because of all these damn problems with my spot lock, my fish finder just does not work. And it's a, been a pain in the ass this whole time. So I'm ready to get one kind of professionally done, mounted on the back, one for my driver's seat. And then also one uh, up front, maybe separate of the trolling motor or some kind of mount to the side. Because this is just frustrating as hell. So we'll figure it out. But, uh, you know, the damn spot lock, man, has been been the bane of my existence. So uh, I hope to have that whole situation, you know, figured out here soon. But finances, right, one thing after the other. So... Oh, it's all of us in life, right? So that's why I tell people, too, don't be afraid. Go out there with the $50, $60 Walmart combo. Don't feel that when you're struggling and you're not doing the greatest in life that you need to save up and get this $150, $200 combo or that you need to buy these expensive lures. You know, get a $50, $60 Walmart combo, a spinning rod or whatever. Start out with, put some 10 or 12-pound test on it and throw everything on the same rod. <laughs> You'll do all right. Get like a medium heavy or a medium, you know, uh, six foot eight to seven foot two, something like that for a spinning rod. And uh, go to town and throw everything and everything. You'll learn stuff. You'll have fun. You'll catch fish. You'll lose fish. But if you can't afford all the fancy stuff, 
doesn't need to stop you from fishing and having fun. That's the one thing I really want, I like to put out there, is I don't want to talk negative about the guys who have all, all the gear and all the stuff, because that's awesome. I, I want to be like that. I want to have as much stuff as I possibly can, too, right? But uh, I don't yet, so I'm working my way there. I got some all right good stuff. So hopefully, you know, get my first DC real soon, you know, stuff like that. But in general, um, it's just about time on water, getting out there and fishing. You don't have to have fancy equipment. It helps. It really does. I'm so, trust me, it really does help. But worry about what you got to worry about first if you can't really, if it's a big deal, you know. Don't spend all your money on fishing gear. Go buy whatever it is and go out and have fun. Because you'll also get good when you do that. You know, you have a couple of crankbaits, a couple of spinner baits, a box of Texas worms, this. Now, you're going to be able to afford a lot, right? So you go get your cheap little pole in line. You get a couple of top water lures. You get a couple of moving lures, crank a couple of jigs, and maybe a little set of hooks and weights for drop shot or for regular and a Texas rig, some bullet weights. And you multipurpose, like, a, like I said, a spinning rod with 10 to 12-pound fluoro. And you multi-purpose this thing, right? You get out there. And when you see fish bumping, jumping, and smashing, you put your little whopper plopper, chop it on there, and zing it out there. You'll catch a few. You get a Mondo, you might lose it, but you never know. It's not the perfect setup, but it'll work. And then a tough day, you can throw your drop shot on it, your little bottom bouncer. do not throw your crankbait. You can throw that. And uh, go about your day and have fun and fish. It's a little minimum investment, and you will get out there and have a, a fun. And then as you lose lures and break them off, um, before you go rushing to spend more money on and just keep throwing that same lure, then what should happen is, because you don't have a ton of money, right, if you were like me, this is how I grew up into fishing, then you just tie on the next lure, and then you start using it. And 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 uh, you start getting better with other lures because you're kind of forced to throw them because you're running out of this, so a compromise. Let's try a deeper diver or medium diver, or let's try a jerk bait instead of a crank bait. Similar, or let's try a spinner bait. How's that? And then you you stumble upon something. Whoa, this bite was even better than the other one, right? And so, it's it's how you'll grow and have fun without spending a lot of money. You know, if if you if you're into fishing, you're new to fishing, and you don't have a lot. Like I said, I'm just trying to point out that don't let it stop you. Don't get depressed. Don't get stressed. There's fishermen are a great bunch. A lot of people donate stuff. Will help out. You know, get out and hit the water and have fun. And uh, if you can afford it, that's awesome. No, no, no down on you either, because that's where I want to be. You know what I mean? I've got, I've got all the great gear that I can. I don't want to lose my fish. You know, I want to be out there smashing them. And stuff still happens. You're gonna lose fish. You're gonna have break things off. Tragedy happens, and that's life. No matter how well you pad yourself up, right? Like a football player with padding, and you could put like a bed on you and a helmet on and a, a futon mattress on the front and gloves and knee pads and run on still something jack you up right <laughs> where uh, you get messed up so life is uh, gonna throw stuff at us so it's how we deal with it right same thing with fishing and uh, that's why i get really big and important on trying to just promote that you can fish with anything be happy get out and fish that's the main thing get out and fish don't knock those who don't have good stuff and don't knock those that do have good stuff. That's why I don't think it's too good to get overly opinionated on what to use on what when someone's like struggling or, you know, ask a few questions. Well, what are you doing? What are you getting it for? Because I'll be honest with my advice. Just go buy a spinning rod from Walmart and make sure it costs about $69.99. You'll be good. It needs to be about this big, you know, and you'll be all right. And then get this pound test and get this and go just do this with your rod. <laughs> right? And you're going to catch some fish. So, um, you know, not everybody can just, especially if they're new into the game or just they can't afford it. Maybe they love it, but uh, they don't have all the gear. So that's why I always make a super important thing of mine to point out that you do you, man, with a smile on your face. And, uh, and, and, if you can afford and get the really good gear, man, no, I, I, you know, all the respect in the world because that's exactly where, like I said, that's where my goals and ambitions are is to like have good reels and maybe a better boat one day, better graphs, you know, have good poles, have the good line. And, uh, 
you know, I work hard. I want to afford it. And I want to, if I work hard, I want to play hard. Um, so I'm not there yet, but I, I do have a $600 combo. So I'm not broke like that aspect, but I also on the same aspect have plenty of $59.99 combo still in use that still put mad numbers in the boat. You think I give the kids one of my $200 Bass Pro combos when we go fishing? Hell no. They get a hog hunter. They get a they get a Bass Pro shops. This and that. They get a they get an ugly stick. <laughs> you know they get a they get this cheap. 40 and 50 60 dollar setups and they kill it and catch fish and have a grand time so yeah of course you know there's better stuff and it helps you but it's all in perspective and and so that's one thing you know i like to preach about and so and be positive you know take care of each other that's why i try to help there's a lot of fishermen are guarded about their secrets where spots their lures and i understand that because a spot is one of the most important things giving up your spot People don't understand you're either a if you do that, you're naive and you don't know how dumb that it was for you to do that. Or B, you're just a super nice guy then and you're you're helping out because giving up your spot is one of the biggest things in fishing because if the fish are there, they'll hit different lures, trust me. So giving up the lure ain't really the ticket. If there's a lake, all the big ones can be in this one cove in this one area. While the rest of the lake may be full of dinks or nothing or a mediocre fish or whatever have you. But sure as shite, there can be days when they're loaded in different areas and they're not just sitting in this one spot. So, you know, the spot is one of the most important things someone can give you. Heck, even what lake is producing, because there could be like in my area, I'm within I'm within an hour of like six lakes and the delta. So which lake do I go to? So when there's a lake that's on fire, that that is really well known. The community can go destroy that lake real quick as far as go fish it, fish it out. You know, if you tell everybody or you just notice that people be in your spot because you told them. But uh, that's the thing is that's what I want to do. I want to put many people on fish. I want them to go out, take their kids, their friends, their family, go out, win some tournaments. Go out and put your kids on fish, put your wife on fish, put your best friend on fish. Because hopefully you've seen me catch them there or you, I told you to go fish there. That makes me feel even better. I don't want the lake to be worse for other people, but the idea is to help the experience of fishing, help people enjoy it, right? And like I said, I'm no guide. I'm no pro. So there's probably better people you could obviously get advice from. But I hope to be entertaining, funny, fun. Um, I hope there's value, right? The, the giveaways, the information, the stories, uh, all the cool stuff. So I, I think that it's a, a great grand adventure we're on, and I love doing this stuff, right? Uh, so a big thank you to everybody. But, you know, I don't know. I just uh, – this is cool stuff. So I hope, you know, I can continue to do this for many, many more years with you guys. So here's to many more catching some fish, having fun. Hopefully the channel's going to grow. We're kind of stuck in a rut around 1,500, so, eh. It's not really growing too fast. It's not losing too much or anything. So, but hey, I'm grateful to be where I'm at. I'm grateful to even have been monetized. That was my goal because I knew, you know, there's a million, a jillion YouTube creators and a lot of them are never going to go nowhere or uh, they're small and their channel will never grow past a certain size. I may very well be one of those guys, but I still enjoy my community i enjoy the content producing i enjoy the the thrill and the fun of it all uh and you know hey eventually hopefully all the other stuff might come down the road you never know you ain't gonna you're not gonna win if you don't try so right i gotta at least give it a shot and not everybody becomes famous or viral overnight I'd hell if I haven't caught plenty of crazy stuff <laughs> they should have but maybe uh I don't know. We're a fishing channel, right? So I don't know how much attention we attract here. That's why I think I really want to start putting a little bit extra time into my other channel, Common Sense Talks, and start getting open, talking from the heart, talking about other stuff uh, that is not fishing related. It may draw in an audience who's interested to hear my story, interested to hear some of the crazy shite that I've seen, interested in hearing how someone goes 
from being homeless and 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 abused as a young kid being in foster care how one goes from being like that to not being rich by any means but to have overcome mostly my demons i still have you know nobody's perfect right but i mean i do own my house my boat my vehicles you know i'm doing a lot better than anyone would have ever thought i would at a certain age in my life and i'm very happy to to share and help others. I want to see other, bring and lift other people up. So um, I'm sure that there's some interest for this kind of content. I just got to figure it out, right? And so my other channel, you're going to have the raw uncut stuff. It's not going to be fishing, obviously. It's going to be news. It's going to be opinion, gaming, all that good stuff. But it's also going to be from the heart. It's going to be stories. It's going to be, it's going to be, uh, my truths. It's going to be my experiences shared with you guys, along with other stories. I'll be reading current events and news and things like that. So if you're interested in that, go check that channel out, Common Sense Talks, if you want to support and see that kind of stuff. Because I definitely do not want to bring that here. So speaking of which, I should shut up about that already, right? And let's talk some fishing. So if anybody has any questions, comments, anything they want to go over, uh, feel free to leave a comment, leave a like. And again, if you're new here, subscribe, think about becoming a member, um, or just simply thank you for watching, period. So, as always, now let's smash this beer and get on. I'm letting these babies get warm. I'm having, uh, what do you call it, I'm babysitting. A beer is so easy to chug in a bottle, though, it's crazy difference than in a in a, a can chugging a beer in a can is like can uh, really mess up your stomach right chugging a beer in a bottle i don't know it's easy i could smash that in one drink easy 12 biggest one i remember doing is i took a 40 ounce one shot when i was probably 19 or 18 we used to have drinking games and uh, like we would be 18 to 20 years old and we would drink two or three 40 ounce malt liquors a night sometimes. And uh, sometimes in order to get drunk quicker or to save money, like if you didn't have a lot of money, because you could, if you drink one slow enough, you barely even felt buzzed. And then if you drank two, you had a pretty good buzz. But if you didn't have the money, we just get our 40s and then smash them as fast as possible as, as humanly possible right and i we would it became a contest to see like how many drinks you could you know the old saying how many licks does it take to get to the center of a tootsie pop ours was how many drinks does it take to down a 40. and so we would the particular beer we would drink was country club because it was the cheapest at that time you know when we were 18 to 20 years old they were a dollar nine after tax, excuse me, they were a dollar nine or something like a dollar fifteen, maybe or a dollar. I want to say I remember a dollar nine is all we had to come up with to get one. So we'd always buy at least two, if not. And then you had to get by the person who was buying you the beer one, right? That's how fishing always went. Not condoning it, YouTube. Uh, just remember, this is we're telling stories here. Uh, I don't think it's positive. You shouldn't go doing this, but hey. Just uh, sharing some nostalgia, right? So anyways, <laughs> yeah, like I said, it got to a point where I smashed a 40 ounce in one drink. It took me only like 30 seconds, just gone. Not even that, maybe 15, something like that. So we were some fools. I tell you what, I tell you what. So, oh, goodness. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around, hanging out on the live streams. Uh, looks like we've lost some people. Hopefully, we'll get some numbers back and we'll get some of the crew back. Uh, Going to be posting more of the uh, toy drive information, toy drive stuff. Try to generate support for it because we're not anywhere near where we were at last year. Last year, we were overflowing with toys already by now. This year has been kind of slow. I think a big thing has to do with I don't have the Kelsey Bass Ranch membership anymore. A lot of people like to fish that place, so sorry. But, hey, I still go out to the Delta, go out to any of the lakes. Boat's perfectly safe now. Doesn't, you know, 
even then the the bilge always worked so but now it doesn't take any water on it's just uh live well doesn't work so we can't uh, take super sexy fishing pics but we can take when you get a good one we can take a picture of that uh, if we get doubles we can take a picture of that but you can't like box your best two or three four or five fish and be like yeah let's take a nice picture you know can't do that you're gonna kill the fish so uh but i'm like i said signing up taking people on fishing trips they donate uh, cash or toys unwrapped or you know unused new toys or cash donation and i go buy the toys so you know big thank you to everybody who's supported if you get a chance uh share you know uh on your you know facebook or whatever and let people know um i'll again be tagging or at least like putting the video back on facebook we're going to talk about like i said the toy drive not in this video per se much anymore but on the facebook post we're going to try to, you know, generate some traffic for for that as well. So appreciate any support. But other than that, uh, you know, like I said, fishing, be prepared to fish this wind and fish the temp swings, which means wind usually also stains or discolors the water. A little bit darker uh, lures maybe. Chartreuse, if you're going to we'll go with the white, I'd go with chartreuse. Reds, blacks, browns. Dark greens, purples should be really good right now, especially purples. I'd say my favorite colors right now would probably be blacks, purples, a chartreuse, and maybe a, uh, a really dark or a kind of darkish brown green. Um, and, uh, you know, move slow. Again, Colorado blade spinner baits should be really good right now. Deep diving, medium diving crankbaits. And uh, rotate and change your speed. I don't know if top water is going to be the key, but as it gets hotter again, there's definitely going to be some great windows for top water. Pay attention to your surroundings. So if you're at a lake and you see the fish busting, throw the top water. Um, but don't sleep on the deep diving stuff, slow rolling. There's lots of big fish down there, and they will hit a moving lure. You just don't want to move it too fast. So Aaron's Magic is a great color, RC. You nailed it. Aaron's Magic, Margarita Mutilator, Morning Dawn, and Bold Bluegill, probably my favorites of the Robo Worms right there. So those are legit killers in almost any body of water. I'll tell you right now, Bold Bluegill, Aaron's Magic, Margarita Mutilator, Morning Dawn, and... Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, those are the those are the key ones that I am like. They're like the big top dogs of uh, robo worms, in my opinion. In any watercolor situation or scenario, those ones will cover you. The bold bluegill is brown, purple, and chartreuse. Super badass. Um, you know, just remember you have some different sizes: some small, some four inches, some five, some sixes. You know, have a couple different sizes on hand to try to match the hatch, and you'll do a lot better. You'll notice if you go from one worm to the next. Sometimes they'll be killing it, but if you go to go to a six, seven inch, you might get bigger fish. Or like I said, you might be throwing a six standard and uh, not getting any, or a five or six and not getting many fish. But as soon as you drop to a three or four inch profile, all of a sudden you start getting smashed and hammered. So. <clears throat> Orange Crusher for sure. Great color too. Yeah, actually orange and red can be good colors uh, right now in the fall. Oranges uh, and pinks are also slept on but can produce big fish and good fish and people don't throw those colors very often. A pink worm and an orange worm are oddball colors. And oddball colors, believe it or not, will outperform the traditional colors certain times. Really, really good actually. <clears throat> hey Eddie, thanks for uh, watching. So um, you hear mentioned to someone else about a guy works on boat motors. You're looking for someone. His name's Oliver. Oliver Jason Oliver. Oliver's Outboards. His business is on Facebook. It's a Facebook business. So you can look him up on Google, but then Google is going to give you a Facebook link, um, and then you can follow it through even if you don't have a Facebook account. 
Um, and it should have his phone number and all that information there. So like you can message him, you can give him a call. I believe he works for another company and then does the boat repairs like as his own business on the side on certain days. The guy is very reliable, trustworthy, and uh, that's who I would recommend if you're not taking the boat to like the manufacturer you bought it from. So if it's used or, you know, you're not wanting to spend an arm and a leg, Jason Oliver. So thanks for the comment. I appreciate you being a big fan and longtime listener and watcher. Thank you very much. So everybody, uh, big shout out to everybody. You know, I'm in a, in a, uh, in a mood, you know, I had that, uh, appointment today about my dog and her cancer and there's not really much we can do so we're just kind of waiting for her to pass away and so it's been a stressful day like that's been on my chest so apologize guys don't want to have a, a buzz kill but yeah i've been a little bit off if you notice maybe you know you know there's just you know stuff that's been going on in the family too so but you know it's part of normal life natural it's something i got to deal with and uh Always when one door opens, another door closes. She's been the awesome dog, so we're just going to treat her awesome, love her, give her the best time that we can for the rest of the time. And, uh, you know, so that's been uh, a little bit on my chest, so I want to apologize to everybody why I missed the last couple of weeks. I only did like one or two live streams a week, so. <laughs> <clears throat> I oh, appreciate it, man. Yeah. I appreciate everybody that watches, listens, hangs out. You know, whether you make it for two or three minutes and you hang out or you make it all night or 10, 20, whatever, I appreciate everybody who comes in, drops in, leaves a comment. You know, I try to give out as much fishing information as I can, positive. I like telling jokes and having a light levit levity uh, attitude and uh, being chipper. Um I'm also here for you guys, too. Thank you for that comment. Um, you know, so really appreciate it. And I'm always, like I said, I'm always here for you. So I got some people, sometimes they reach out to me through Facebook. So don't be afraid if you ever have a question or a thing, too. So I appreciate it. That's why I share with you guys, too. we got a great community here. I'm very open. You know, I'll tell you guys about what problem. I don't like to, like, problem drop, you know. But I'll share with you guys with what's going on in my life a little bit. So I'm not I'm not an introvert. I'm an extrovert. I'm super open. I don't really care, right? If you judge me, whatever. But if you if you're cool, then cool too. Awesome. But uh, I use it so that you have at least some kind of idea of of where I'm coming from or what's going on, and it helps in the stories and the situation. Give it context, and uh, it helps build trust with people too when you're truthful with them. That's another big one. Look them in the eye and just be real with people. And usually I like to see it that in my heating and air business, I'm truthful, I'm honest. Um, um, I try to do the best job that I can, and success always seems to follow. Every once in a while, life throws you lemons and gives you curveballs. You just got to try to hopefully don't swing and it's a ball and then make lemonade out of it, right? So, you know, get the, the analogies and the situations and um, just wing it, man. Life's... So, you know, anyways, <laughs> got all down the rabbit hole for a second there. I'm getting a couple of, I got a buzz on. We're four beers in now, so. <laughs> but, yeah, this is another <clears throat> great lure. If you're fishing and the water's kind of brown or stained right now, this lure, as you can see, I've got it tied on. You can see the line. This is a Berkeley Big Game. It's mono. See how it's like a bluish green color? I think that's the 17 or 15 pound. Maybe 15, 15 or 17. And I use that on one of my bigger, more flexible uh, crankbait rods, but it's like a 7.2. And man, it works great. You can get down there and smash them. So look at this. If you guys notice, one of the hooks is bent out. You see that? I lost a, a decent one on this, so I brought it in to tune it up and change the hooks out and all that. And I've been lazy. I haven't uh, haven't adjusted it and fixed it yet. Fixed it. 
Yep, yep. Freestyle Friday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bringing back Freestyle Friday. <laughs> I can do it. If you guys want to see me lose half my viewers for a minute, I could put some music on and get down. Oh, let me put a different YouTube channel on now. It can't be mine because <laughs> I'm live right now. So let's go. I gotta go home. But, oh, now let's look for a beat. So, anyways, anything you guys want to chat about? Like I said, leave a comment. Uh, we'll, well, how about this? We'll wrap. How about this? We'll wrap like fishing related or uh, like home and family related. We won't get too crazy or stupid, and uh, we'll try to keep the topics cool. <clears throat> so let's see here. It is so hot in here. I need to turn this AC back on. I'm sweating Balzonians. I'm in my third car garage. I freaking insulated the door. I got insulated walls that I built all around me. And uh, uh, yep. There we go. Turn that on. Make it cooler. And then I'm going to close this door. Hold on. Ooh, I'm going to nail that better. Uh-oh, time to do a little bit of carpentry work on my door. Wah, wah, wah. All right, folks. We got to go to uh, YouTube's, uh, what is it? Um, there is, I think, a uh, I got to search up copyright free. So I can't, uh, I don't want to get busted because I'm doing Google like, ads can help you find new you know, going live. So, no matter how they search for your business, let's check it out here. <laughs> How's everybody doing this Friday night? See, common sense getting tight. Getting right, trying to catch fish like every night. You know, I ain't trying to live to no hype. I'm going to do what I do in that song. Because you know I'm living like I got my back against the wall. And every moment, I'm going to give it my all. And I'm going to ball if I have to. Call me the mathematician. I'm going to have you if I have to. You know what I mean, dude? Because I'm going to keep it real. Hard life still. We'll deal with the cards that I'm giving. Like I said, I'm risen. Like he who shall not be named. I got game when I spit and I bring it like flame. I remain in the game like a stain in your brain. Blood stain in the streets. I meet like meat to the freaking grill. It's ill. I will keep it real on the way. West Coast got more roast than beef when I post. Chill, cause you know I gotta do it like most. No, I'ma do it my way. Take the highway, cause you know I'm main. Yeah, cause that's the real way. I'ma do it, cause you know I'm ill with it. Stay fluid with the music when I come through. Drinking on another beer. Tell me now what you gonna do. Freestyle Friday on the page. I'm rapping about anything. Give me your subject and tell me now what's next. Cause if I have to, I'ma clear the suspects. Break next when I rap with these lyrical flows When you break your neck like, yo, what's that? Bust back, nah, keep it real Cause you know I'ma do it One day, hopefully, I'll go viral, but I won't do a doing no sniper, type of wipe or type weird shit. I'm going to do a doing me, and that's illness, because I spit, because you know I'm like a villain, Lex Luthor. I got to do what I got to do, you better believe it, I'm coming through with the sickness, yeah. I got a gift to spit it, and I'm going to spit it my way. Let's see if we can find another beat, man. I gotta watch it for the time it runs out Cause I don't wanna get hit with a copyright strike When it runs to the next beat Now let me Do what I gotta do swiftly Tell them all they can 
I'm the cook and you can kiss me. Bitch, be talking shit, we. Oh, I gotta keep it clean. We on that live stream. Now I got all these dreams. I'm a fiend when I'm after my money. Better believe I'm living that type of lifestyle, man. It ain't funny. When that gets runny, you know I get thick. I gotta do what I got to do because I'm after it. My scritch, my scratch, my skrilla. Now I'm off in the river. And I deliver the sicker like some liquor to your liver. Call me Mr. Common Sense Fishing. Wishing I'm always fishing that you could get just the tip like an iceberg. I'm so cold. Roll with sweater roll. Don't want no charges. Hit them up like C4. No hardly. You can't stop this. I keep rolling and flowing. Whatever they say, you like the snow. I just keep blowing. I'm cold as hell. Now can't you tell? I'm swell. I got to do what I got to do like a freaking well. I'm going to blow them out like Jonah. Only uh. You can't stop this premeditated on top shit. I keep rolling even when I mess up. Tell me what's next. Give me the next list to bust on any subject. Let's see. Give me a minute to think about it. And then I'm going to shift with the breeze and change gears throughout the years. I've been here doing whatever I do with no fear. You know me. Now you got my ear. I'm here to listen to the world and try to spit the truth to you. Better believe a straight Ruger go through you. If it will, then a nine mil hit you, but what about a 50 cal it get you with the issue? Here's some tissue if you're crying. I ain't lying. I'm spitting only truth and realness. Now, can you feel this? Just some freestyle rapping. Everybody talking crap and all I hear is clapping. Better back the up because I don't learn how to act up. Mother get smacked up because that's just the way we roll. Yeah, I'm from the ghetto. If you can't tell by the way I speak, I used to play with heavy metal. I used to roll a mohawk. If fools could get socked, I run around the block. Yeah, I talked a lot. Of, yeah, but I walked the walk and I didn't really bullshit. To tell me, could it get any worse with the automatic bullets? Full clips unload. Busted flows from the dome. All right, hopefully we ain't losing all our people. Now smash that like. All right, we got Shamina, ah, Shamina SLX. Woo, fire. All right, let's burn the place down. Because we ain't playing around, so tell me what now. I hear the beats coming to a close, so I chill. Lift them off their toes like an uppercut to the nose. Stephen Dave. All right, Stephen Dave are using eToro apparently. Steve does extensive research. Oh man, all that research. They're calling to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Is that the next subject? I pick up the phone thinking, come on now, what's next? We're here to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. Immediately I hang up all pissed. Shit, how to get my number? It's the feds. I smoked one too many blunts to the head. Now I want to leave them all dead like Fred. What are they speaking? I leave them leaking from the brain like how did he speak I'm making up words because they all looking like turds. But the proverbs from the birds that I spit these words are so fire. I'll make them retire like four flat tires. They straight stuck. Don't know what to do in the muck and mud. They stuck like a stick and I'm like let me keep it real man life is a bitch and if you want to get rich you got to struggle and hustle and climb and claw your way to the top and never stop and quit about the shit that you're going through because it makes you harder like the fire tempers the metal yeah you better believe it's heavy metal when i rock i don't stop when i top i'm trying to get to the top i'm trying to keep on rolling i'm never slowing let me know it feels like i got a boulder on my shoulders and it feels like the world because i got four kids to raise i'm trying to teach them how to turn the page and live a better life and turn the cheek in the face if they get struck how to live life like what but still be men and women with backbones and spines but don't be assholes like the people of these times stuck on your phone with your mind just melted brainwashed by everything that you see can you smell it what the sambo is cooking a common sense fishing wishing i could reach the rest of the internet and i wasn't just stuck in this little room feeling the doom but you know what sometimes maybe it'll be coming soon i feel like i gotta rip out this womb and feel the real life and live it you know what i'm doing i'm going through them but i'm trying to raise my children that there's something bigger yeah you gotta take that anger and kill it and go 
after it and use it like a fire, like a torch so you can make it through the night. And if it gets darker, it's just a spark to light your way. I'm going to teach you because I'm speaking words from the brain. This ain't no lame. Please believe it. This is freestyle flowing from the spirit and I'm going to leave it alone. I don't have to do it because I have so many broken bones and bruised just to show where I've come from. Better believe it. It's just these words that I'm speaking. Let me try to reach you. Let me try to teach you. Please believe I don't want to beat you. Just want to talk to you about fishing and wishing that we had a better life for our children. What I'm trying to give them is the same thing, y'all. We may have different approaches and different paths, but the end goal is just a life full of love and last, not full of blood and aftermath. I'm after the cash, the same as everyone else, but I ain't got no crooked way to try to get there. I got some ethics and I'm going to stick to them because I'm going to be me. And please believe that I got to be a G anyways. Freestyle flowing, letting them know I'm exploding like C flow, and I don't take no names. I don't really give two sh, but I keep it real because I really care about life, man. It's a bitch, and I care about you too. Please believe it. All right, I didn't even read in your comments, so I'm just gonna keep going. That one felt good. I don't even know half of what I said. Freestyle Friday. Racho Bunch, thanks for getting this started. I haven't done this in a while. I've been feeling retarded. My mind is melted. Got a lot of stuff to get off my chest. If you can't tell, now you're going to feel it. Felt it. I don't know, but like The Rock said, I smelt it. It's whatever I'm dealing. Sometimes these beats I ain't really feeling. But I got some skill in rapping, so I'm just going to keep on going. I'm going to leave them chilling like, damn. Can he really do it? Can he really go through it and show these different styles? Leave him in the pile with these smiles. Because I'm going to keep doing me any way that I got it. I ain't copying any other. Yeah, I'm going to do the realest, dealest. Did you ever seen like a villain? Can you feel us? Like a blood? I'm going to have to feel it because I'm the illest. I'm going to have to come through smoking and choking, blowing. Like my name was Casper and I'm coming out of Oakland. But you know we call it smoking. I'm sitting in the Central Valley with the backyard full of bomb on. Another level you don't want to see me on. Better believe it with the red eyes. I'm going to leave it in a whole nother dimension, dimensional system. These mother can't even get close to me, rose to me, can't touch this like you see me has it said, I'm gonna bust. Yeah, I might have studied it, but I'm gonna just keep on rolling and smoking because I'm doing it like I'm doing it, like I'm coming out of smoking, open, filled with pounds of the green. You know what I mean? If you on the team, you see me smoking on green with a TAC crystally enhanced to put me in a trance when I smash, smash right past them. And I'm using a certain subject about that Mary Jane. Been illegalized, criminalized, and so insane. And this low to the brain. Why has it been like this for so long? This reef of madness and sadness. Why so many people in prison for just some gladness? Happy in a bag, better believe it. And I'm sad that so many people had to leave it, leave it alone. I'm going to break them to the bone for the soul and the song. Let me tell you, should have never been on. People shouldn't be rotting in jail for no damn marijuana. I'm going to have to do what I want. I'm standing in the middle of the street and I'm smoking some on it. Another level, and I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm ruthless. Better believe I'm going to do this because I'm going to have to come through smoothness on the music. It's Freestyle Friday and they gave me the pain. They gave me the way to let it all off my chest. So I'm going to do the best. Hit them up and like a freaking tech. I'm going to unload a hundred to the side. Coming right out the soul, right out the brain, right out the top of the freestyle flow and let them know when I'm exploding. I'm doing it like this, like I was chosen, but they don't be knowing. I'm gonna leave them frozen like liquid nitrogen where I might be again. But I'm a fiend on this freaking mic. I'm gonna pick it up and go so tight when I take flight like an M16. But you better believe when I light off and I send the rounds flying lyrically, I'm gonna speak whatever I speak from the brain indeed. And I'm flowing like a river I deliver. Like I said earlier, coming, Mr. Premeditated when I get you. But this ain't common sense. It's premeditated now. And I'm dropping words from the dome. Cause I'm thinking about them before I come up with them because this is freestyle flowing and I'm doing whatever I'm doing because like I said, like a river when I'm flowing side to side, left and right, but I'm filled with fish in my mind every night because all I want to do is fish and I wish that was the only thing I was doing with my family pursuing. If I had enough money, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Maybe I would because it's fun. <laughs> Frog fishing. Frog fishing. All right. Frog fishing. <sighs> Frog fishing on the top for a plop. Yeah, wow. You know what I'm talking about. You feeling it in the bones? I know I'm feeling it. I got the Jones. I'm frog fishing, wishing I could be out back on the lily pads, popping them, pissed when I miss them. Damn, swung too fast. Gotta slow down, pull the hooks back. 
ready for another attack. When I throw that frog right back, sometimes it takes a couple of hops. Sometimes it hits it right away. You know what I mean? Chilling in the hideaway. Come about out the grass, ready to suck it under. Better believe I'm ready for that plunder. No wonder when you catch a big old bass on a frog, it's like, damn, I cast him right next to the log. Call me Sam the man. Get a next beat. I could have kept going. But I had to be slowing. Don't go be knowing. So you never have to My brain is going. Work. Instant corrections. And while it's going, there ain't no slowing like ADHD. This is how I be letting them know. I just can't seem to contain the things that are always running through my brain. I can speak it at the speed that it comes to me. Please believe this freestyle flowing when I'm running with it. What the hell is this? 90s boom bap. You got whoop whap with the boom bap. Sounds like some East Coast. What? East Coast. But I'm on the West Coast. But we ain't got no beef. So let me just do this boom bap. Who that? They don't even think they know who that. That's common sense vision on the screen. Talking about living his life. Talking about living his dreams. Being efficient. Doing whatever he's wishing. You can catch him chilling in the kitchen with his two foot bomb. Cooking up something bomb. A try tipping his song. Singing his songs. Whistling. And when the kids come in, put the bomb away. Chilling. Looking with the grin. Hey kids, how's it going? Want a bloody meaty piece? Or you want it rare? Or you want it well done? Indeed, I got a family that I'm trying to take after. You know what I'm doing, but when they ain't looking, I'm gonna have to laugh because I'm chilling, getting so high. Doing what I do because I'm gonna have to flow right. I don't like this shit, so I flow lame. That's my excuse, man. <laughs> I didn't like that beat. Let's see here. I'm trying to think of a subject on the flow that I didn't like. like mm. All right. They don't know what to do when they see me coming. The drive by, man, I'm running and dumping. I'm a product of Lynch, pocket twister. I'm about to have to get you. Better believe I'm Mr. Premeditated or otherwise. No, this common sense vision. Always on a mission. Never slipping. Doing what I'm doing. In and out the cuts. Catching fish. Catch me on the river or on the lake, man. Life's a dish. So I'm always smashing. Yeah, my little 90 gets 50. Better believe we moving so swiftly to the next point. Light up joint. Hit it now with song. Throw the jig at the big rocks and wait for a bomb. This song, big fish, big wish. Try to get it, get the net. It's a double digit, what you expect. Common sense fishing, wishing I'm always fishing. Living on the tip of the iceberg and I'm living on life this gift that I got to spit it. Freestyle Friday, it's my way. We get high, man. <laughs> All right, folks. Got a little Freestyle Friday and hope you guys enjoy. I don't want to just rap at you all night. So uh, if one day we go viral from that, maybe we'll make it a uh, we'll make that a, a theme or a thing. I don't want to piss off all my other fishermen. You know, hey, I should probably put up like some country rap or something. I could do something different. But uh, either way, hope you guys enjoyed a little just BS and you start running out of things unless like I could sit down and actually start writing a song. You know, I cover what I, unless someone gives me a subject, then I might go for a little bit. Or if I have a couple subjects, I can link them together. But um, ah, either way, had some fun. Had about, what, 15 minutes of freestyling in there. Just blah, 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 blah for a minute. So, <laughs> yep, yep, I got the gift of gab. I can talk. But, uh, you know, the point is to hopefully talk some, some entertainment, some sense, <laughs> talk some jokes. And uh, talk some tips to help you guys put some fish on the other end of them lines, right? <laughs> and like I said, I don't think there's another fishing channel like this out there. So share it. Smash that like button. Thanks for watching. Hell if I know. Have a great night. Uh, I'm going to smash another beer, and I think I'm off for a minute. we got about seven minutes. If we get a lot of people on here, you know how it rolls. I'll go later even into the night a little bit. But, uh, you know, we're down. So we got to get our count up. So we got to get more people back on the channel. So I'm going to try to make sure I'm religiously on this thing. 
Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This weekend, I might try to do a something live just for you members only. So, um, so you know, big thank you to everybody who's uh, watching and been part of the channel. But, uh, yeah, I think this weekend we'll try to do, like, a members only live stream. And um, maybe I'll pull, like, all my tackle and all my gear out. Like, I'll get everything right here. We can do, like, a question and answers, get real serious on fishing. And then we can talk all the shit we want. Like, we'll keep it members only. There's no monetization issues, no cursing issues, uh, no whatever issues. So, you know, we'll just have a good night, a lot of fun. So I'm thinking about trying to do that this weekend. So if you get a chance and you want to jump in, you know, for the members only, most of the guys watching tonight are members. For those of you that aren't, uh, we do offer memberships. Uh, you get discounted gear and merchandise if you want to buy it. I do have shirts available. You can reach out to me. But also the big thing is we have giveaways every month, and we do a lot of, like, uh, early access. And I'm also doing videos that are specifically for the members that will not ever go um, uh, public. And you get access to all my dirt. So when we flip out and have a, a live stream that's kind of crazy and they go south, I put those members only. So I don't delete them, but I set them up where you guys only can watch them. So those hardcore supporters of mine, I don't have to worry about getting too offended or pissed off. <laughs> you can catch me in my like most animated moments, getting all excited or whatever have you. So there's lots of cool reasons to be a member. So thanks, everybody, for being a member and supporting Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. For those of you, if you've made it this far or you're just clicking on, <laughs> think about uh, hitting that little red button that says subscribe. You know, hopefully I've earned that by now. So big thank you. Uh, let's get the channel growing. If you want to share it on your Facebook pages, social media, Instagram, whatever, let people know, hey, there's a, a, a guy that uh, gives stuff away, cracks jokes, talks shite, and drinks beer all night. And uh, he actually knows a little bit about fishing. So <laughs> you know if you guys want you know other than that thanks for watching we got about four minutes left we'll end that with an epic beer smash and no i did not mean that one i mean this one i think i sound like trump right there. and no i did not mean that one i mean this one i do not have little hands okay okay Oh, I scared myself with that little thing. I used to be able, I still can, but sometimes I do it on accident and I shoot out, hit myself in the face, popped them off my forehead. Come on, you guys know how to shoot a beer cap? You just shake it up with a little pressure and then you hit it viciously. It'll, it'll fire off real fast if you release the pressure quick enough. So you do it fast enough or quick enough, it'll shoot the, the lid off like a little, little bullet. <laughs> All right, you ready? Cheers, salut, happy Friday, be safe, uh, you know, spend some time with your family and kids, life's short, uh, if you have a dog, pet your dog, spend time with it, life's short, and uh, it, go fishing, get outside, screw this damn lockdown crap that's going around the world, you know, I'm not trying to get political, but just get out, fish, live life, be happy. Uh. Beer don't hurt, but I don't condone the drinking for the YouTube sensors and whatnot. We try to keep it clean here. Uh, I think I messed up and said, like, the S word a bunch of times. I don't think I said anything else. So hopefully we don't get demonetized tonight. But if we do, whatever the hell. Our live streams, I don't ever monetize them. I've been trying to lately to help. Maybe YouTube will help promote it more. <laughs> if they're like, hey, we could get some money on this, then maybe they'll push it. Because I never monetize my live streams. My live streams are never, you know, they're just whatever. So I figured if I start putting ads and monetizing at the beginning of them, then if you watch this later, um, it'll help YouTube push it more. So we'll see. <laughs> but uh Anyways, thanks for watching tonight. Let's get this beard down. It's almost uh, 9 o'clock. <sighs> and that's it. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> the Pirate. Common Sense Fishing.
<laughs> night, Marco. Thanks for making through it, most of it. Uh, you know, the, the freestyling, the yapping, and uh, the burping. So, hey, hopefully I put a smile on your face tonight. You might have learned something or just got entertained and had fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next Monday. Thank you, Marco. Uh, if you guys are ever interested in hearing me go again, just let me know. You guys are easy. I'm easy to set off. <laughs> you just got to give me a little path and I go down it. Woo! You know, set me down it. Give me a, a, give me a subject to talk about. Uh, if you want to see me rap or, you know, get me animated, just bring certain things up and I'll get excited real quick. So <laughs> anyways, thank you guys. Have a good night. Be safe. Have a good weekend. You know, catch some fish, spend some time with your family, loved ones, your friends, your animals, your dogs, life short. Enjoy it. Live it. Be happy. Treat other people nice. Um, if you're local, you're interested in fishing trips, remember I'm doing the toy drive. <clears throat> Share the video if you guys get a chance. Smash the like button. And we'll see you guys next Monday. I don't plan on missing any of these. So, Again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if I miss one, I'm going to damn sure make sure that if I miss one, I make it up the next day. So if I miss a Monday, I'll be on Tuesday. If I miss a Wednesday, I'll be on Thursday. And we're going to get into more members-only stuff. So this weekend, expect to uh, get a notification if you guys are interested in jumping in. We'll see you guys this weekend for the members. Otherwise, the rest of everybody, we'll see you guys Monday night. Again, hope everybody has a great weekend, and we'll see you. Bam!